right, we're going to take a look at pre-allocation and how it's used and, and why it's used and the difference between pre-allocation and allocation. It's an area that we actually get quite a few questions on and, uh, and I can understand why. So first of all, we'll talk about how a pre-allocation is used. The idea is if you want to be able to set inventory aside for a customer while it's still in production or even at the same time that you're placing an order with a supplier, you use pre-allocation to do that. So it's a way to sort of link a sales order with a purchase order right away so there's no confusion as to the reason for that purchase order and who it's going to. That's, that's pre-allocation. Now allocation is used to take inventory that's either on the water or in stock and lock it down for a particular order so it doesn't get used by someone else. So let's, let's kind of walk through that because that's, that's a little confusing. So first of all, we'll start with pre-allocation and there's three different ways in which a pre-allocation can be established. The first of which is in using this contracts function. So this is for situations where it's a one-to-one, -one, you're placing an order, the customer places an order with you and you don't really have the inventory but you're placing an order with the supplier to fill that order and you want them all linked together. So that's called contract. So you do that in contract to sign. You would pick a customer. I'll just do it here. Pick a customer. Pick a vendor. And we'll put in the customer's PO number. We put in the product. And a quantity, let's say it's a thousand pounds. And then you got your sale price and your purchase price. So the purchase price, 30 cents a pound. And you're sort of creating the sales order and the purchase order all together and you're pre-allocating them together. So the pre-allocation part all happens behind the scenes. But the reality is anytime you go to look up that PO in the system, it, you'll always know it'll be referenced. This, this sales order will be linked to it. Um, so as soon as you create, click assign, then it creates both orders and it pre-allocates them together. So that's using the contract function. And the pre-allocation happens automatically and it happens behind the scenes and the user doesn't even really see what's going on. The, you just know that those two orders are, are, are matched together. The next way is within a sales order, when you're creating a sales order, let's again create a sales order, we use the same customer, pick a product, and again we'll say a thousand pounds, and we'll say assign. Now that creates the sales order. Now this next screen is the sales order preparation screen. Well you can auto generate a PO and that's going to go look at the default vendor for the, the difference here is in, in contracts it's a one-to-one -one. so it's one vendor one sales order in, in this case if we say auto generate purchase orders it's going to look at the default vendor for every item on this order and create a PO for each of them so as soon as I click generate no, notice it's telling me here's the the vendor that it's going to that it's suggesting that I use for this product and it actually is going to suggest a shipping schedule to me too um, based on where it's shipping to, it will it'll generate that shipping schedule. But I'll click generate. It generates the PO and it also pre-allocates it to the sales order. So in this case you can see it's telling us PO number 55044 has been generated and it's also indicating that it's linked with this sales order. So that's the second way in which a pre-allocation can be created. The third way is just is much more manual and that's going to be done from the sales and purchase menu, pre-allocation processing. So what you do here is this would be if you want to only allocate a portion of an order or pre-allocate a portion of an order, you would do it here in this, this manual way. Um, so let me just pick, pick an order here. Let's say we choose this 1055. So as soon as I pick that sales order, this is going to show me all open POs regardless of PO status and offer me the option to pre-allocate against any of them. So these are all just three open POs that haven't shipped yet from this vendor. So I could pre-allocate against one of these or this is actually inventory that's sitting in the warehouse and if I wanted to I could actually allocate against that. So that's the third way in which you can establish a pre-allocation. Um, Let's look at how the pre-allocation appears when you're using the system. Uh, one example would be, let me go, let's say we want to create a container. 
So we placed an order with a supplier, and they um, and they shipped it to us. And yeah, let me let me just pick this guy here. Oh no, that's that one's not pre-allocated. Let me choose this one instead. Okay, so here's a good example. This one is pre-allocated. So you see how that little eye icon appears here? That tells you this is a pre-allocation for 1,500 pounds of acetone. Now in this case, this inventory is not pre-allocated. This one is. So you see when you hover over that little eye icon, it shows you there, this pre-allocation already exists, and it tells you what sales order it's pre-allocated to. So if the vendor ships us short, like let's say they ship us only 1,000 pounds, we wanted 1,500, but they shipped us 1,000, we can say whether or not we want to create a back order on the PO and the associated sales order, or we can say, you know what, it's close enough, don't worry about them, um, we'll just close out the PO. But in this case, I'm going to say go ahead and create a, a back order for both, and it now knows, oh, we've got to put in a container number here, let's say NYA. See, so now it's, this text is basically explaining what it's doing, which is it's reducing the quantity on the, on the first shipment of the purchase order and creating a second shipment, and it's reducing the quantity on the first shipment of the sales order and creating a back order on, on the sales order, too. Um, so that's sort of creating and managing the pre-allocations. Now, pretty much anywhere you go to look up inventory, that quantity has been removed from the quantity available. So when you want to see how much inventory you have, that, that pre-allocated quantity is, is not going to be included. Now, let's step over to allocation, and that is a locking down of the inventory. So let's say that we want to actually allocate an order, and we're, we're ready to ship it out to the customer we want, we want to allocate. We're going to come in here and say inventory allocation, and I'll pick one, let's say this one. And it brings up this screen. So this shows us what warehouses we have inventory available in. In this case, it's just the one. And if I want to get more specific and look at particular lots, this shows me what lots we have available in each warehouse, too, and, and the quantities in each warehouse. So this is what's available. Now, what I can do here is say, show all, including unavailable portions, which means, let's say I didn't really have enough here to fill the order. Um, if I say, show me unavailable, and you'll notice this one pops up too. Well, this is another order that's already pre-allocated to someone else. So if I wanted to, I could steal this and, and use it for my order instead. Um, so that's, that's sort of how the pre-allocation works as well. But let's say I don't want to do that. I'll just ship this out as is. Then I'll allocate. And now that inventory is spoken for. It's no longer available and cannot be taken by anyone else. Yet we're not actually saying that this customer is ready for it yet. That's, that's the status of final match. That's allocated, but the customer is not yet ready for it. When they are ready for it, we're going to change the status here to release, and then that's how you create the paperwork to ship the goods out and, and generate the invoice and everything. Um, if you want to unmatch it, you want to go give it to somebody else, then you come in here and say unmatch, and that removes this final match status.